Hey everybody, so this is gonna be a little bit of a fun video. Are you familiar with Doll E2? And if you're not familiar with Doll E2, then we are going to talk about Doll E2 because this thing, quite honestly, is kind of crazy. I asked an AI drawing uh, to show me Palantir and the results may shock you. And the reason the results may shock you is because this thing popped out some pretty interesting images. So before we get into this, one of the bra biggest breakthroughs in artificial intelligence and NLP, which is natural language processing, has been Dal E2, which is a open AI project. Open AI is a organization that is trying to find the best uh, use cases for artificial intelligence for humanity that uses some of the most highly sophisticated AI trained models around NLP to create images based on purely typing in words. So when you think about Google for a second, what was Google? It was a search engine for the world's information. You type in how to tie a uh, shoestring and a bunch of results popped up from people around the world talking about this that you didn't know about and Google was the centralized authority that was indexing all that content across the world to provide you a relevant search result it's the same thing that's happening in video uh, in the context of what's going up on YouTube right now well Google was a breakthrough because any set of keywords you could type in and Google's and its fancy algorithms could then interpret those keywords and then pop out a result that was meaningful enough uh, for exactly what you were looking for well, that was, I think, a first version of search. As technology, as AI, as machine learning is getting more and more powerful to the point where, you know, we have computers that are becoming quite literally sentient, meaning they can think and speak on their own because they have hundreds of millions of data points to access from, to be able to compound on top of each other. This is what's happening with Tesla and their self-driving cars. What if you could just type in a certain keyword, like people swinging near a sunset into an AI tool that could then create that image? What ethical implications does that have for the concept of art uh, or originality if a tool can just create something with words and so the, you know this is sort of the key concept around uh dolly too here's a quick video i just want to play like a quick one minute clip of uh this being the discussed the clip doesn't really have from mkbhd who's a really really popular um youtuber talking about this and then we'll we'll keep going from there and, and it, i think it'll give some more context around this clip and diffusion so clip is the part that's matching images to text and basically uses that match to train the computer to understand concepts in images. So it can generate new images of the same concepts. So when I asked it for an astronaut riding a horse, for example, it's not just making a mosaic of images it found online. It knows the idea of what an astronaut is. It knows what the concept of riding means. It knows what a horse is. And maybe most impressively, it knows what's an aesthetically pleasing image to humans. So then it can create a completely new visual version of this idea that hasn't existed before. Now, Clip does. That's pretty, pretty insane, uh, if you ask me. So there, this version, this this tool is in private beta, Dolly 2. It's not available to the public yet. But there's a smaller version of it called Crayon.com, called Dolly Mini. And so you can type in anything. It's not as accurate as Dolly uh too. It, it, it's like a very, very condensed version of it, but you type in something and it tries to use their AI and uh, machine learning uh, models to be able to figure out how to create an image. To me, from an ethical implication, this means a lot because if, if, you know, if you're an artist and you can paint something, but if you're an average person and you can just type something and get a painting that is almost as good as what, if not better than what an artist could create, like a professional, really creative person, uh, it challenges concepts of creativity. It doesn't destroy creativity. It doesn't destroy graphic design, but it definitely helps more and more people create things because just like YouTube, what does it do? Like it lets average people just upload videos. Now everyone can become a Hollywood movie director if they want it on this platform. Well, the same thing can happen if you have AI based training modules that can just create the content, but you have to be creative enough to think of the words that are able to get the content to come out in the first place. Really, really awesome stuff. So I typed in the word Palantir into this tool and this is what I got. I thought I was going to get uh, Lord of the Rings stuff because Palantir, you know, embodies that stuff. Uh, I don't know. I thought I was going to get maybe some spinning orbs or something, uh, again, from Lord of the Rings. But we got a bunch of versions of Carp. And it was pretty cool. Obviously, the reason I think this happened, as you can see, he's wearing a suit in almost all of them. These are some pictures that we've seen before. Like, these are different versions of pictures we've seen on Google. Um, and it's interesting because it's like, if I type in Palantir on Google right now, I would probably get a bunch of images of Alex Carp as well. So, it's like, the unique thing about this is that it's not indexing images from Google. It doesn't know what like Google is. It doesn't know what like regular images are. It's trying to take this keyword pound here that has been used throughout society and then trying to use their AI models to then figure out how to replicate some type of imagery that is correlated with this word in a meaningful way. Uh, and the actual Dolly 2, uh, the, the one that's really more advanced that you saw in the video, I would really wonder what would happen if you type in pound on that, how accurate and clear the pictures would be. Uh, so we get Alex Garp. 
it's pretty much all in there that that's him for palantir and you can see these distorted images because it can't really do well on faces and stuff like that uh and so you know it, it, i thought it would be lord of the ring pictures it ended up being alex carp and so i guess the point of this video is we can all confirm that alex carp is palantir and all of our money as investors is uh in 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 this guy's hands so yeah alex carp palantir